It's my pleasure to introduce Cynthia Pitter. Cynthia is a registered nurse and a midwife for over 20 years. She's a lecturer at the University of the West Indies School of Nursing in Mona. She holds a Master in Nursing Science from the University of the West Indies and is doing doctoral studies at the Institute for Gender and Development Studies, where her research and publications are focusing on gender-based violence in pregnancy. Currently, she represents the Jamaica Midwives Association at the board level at the Nursing Council of Jamaica. She is an educator and a trustee for the Caribbean Regional Midwives Association and one of two coordinators for the Young Midwifery Leadership Program in the English-speaking Caribbean. Welcome, Cynthia. We're looking forward to your presentation. You have the microphone. Thank you, Cecilia. Good morning, everybody. It's morning in Jamaica, warm, sunny Jamaica. Happy International Day of the Midwest, and it's my privilege to be here. And I just want to say thank you to Linda for inviting me, and thanks to all the midwives around the world, and in Jamaica in particular. Our international, our national project that we are doing for the International Day of the Midwives in Jamaica is to pay our president is at the, at the moment is at the, our largest maternity health facility in Jamaica, that's the Victoria Jubilee Hospital. She's paying a courtesy, to, courtesy call to all the, the women that are there, all the mothers, and she will make a presentation to the two first babies that were born this morning. And also she will be awarding the midwife that has been working the longest at that institution. So like um, Cecilia said, I am from Jamaica, beautiful island of Jamaica. And we are known in the Caribbean, that's Jamaica in the pink where the arrow is. And we are known around the world for our legend, Bob Marley. Um, or reggae artist, and uh, I'm trying to navigate. Okay, we are very honored to tell you that we have the fastest woman in the world and also the fastest man. That is, Jamaica is the home of the fastest woman and man in the world. Kingston is our capital and we are a resort country. As a matter of fact, we were ranked the third island in the world and the first in the Caribbean. This is my school where I work, the U.S. School of Nursing, and the pictures that you, you are seeing on your right is um, our president, Mrs. Baster, she visited us in January and she had a public lecture. And that's the executive body of our Jamaica Midwife Association. We have over 300 direct entry midwives in Jamaica, plus midwives who are also registered nurses. My focus today is to um, inform you or talk with you about respectful maternity care. That's the other R word in maternity services. Cynthia, can you speak um, a bit closer to your microphone so that you're louder? All right, I'm working on it. Okay, this, this project, I became interested in this project when uh, um, I started reading about it and realized that USAID has done many work in other parts of the world on this topic. And then I started to see how can we do something about it in Jamaica. So my object is for today, I will look at some definition of terms and hope it generates some discussions around the respectful care in maternity. And also give an outline of the proposal that I'm working on in Jamaica. Respectful maternity care is not something new, but it started to emerge, we started to coin the word in the 1970s and 1980s. It was brought to national or global attention in 1985 
when Maine, along with Roseland Field, um, brought it to an international conference, the World Respect for Living for Care. Since then, we have had the Safe Motherhood in 1987, and also the International Conference on Population and Development Program Action in 1994 has also initiated this concept. That was 19, from the 1970s up until now. We are still having that problem because a meeting was held in Rwanda in just November 2015. And from that meeting, we can say that we are still having the problem around the world. Out of that meeting, individuals were talking that we are teaching midwives to do good vaginal exams, but not to be kind. They believe that respect uh, maternity care is sometimes framed as a soft issue without the same urgency as emergency obstetric services, but the consequences of mistreatment can be serious and far-reaching. The participants at that meeting agreed that more work is needed to achieve high-quality care that is both safe and respectful. WHO also has declared universal rights of all women and as an essential component of quality care. Respectful care, I believe, is an essential component in achieving the maternal health goals of the Sustainable Development Goals for the 2030 Agenda. It is an urgent priority. In defining the, the term respectful maternity care, the universal rights of childbearing defines it as an evidence-based practical model that focuses on the inter interpersonal interaction that a woman encounters during labor, delivery, and postpartum. Emphasis is placed on the respect for women's basic human rights, including respect for women's autonomy, dignity, feeling, feelings, choices, and preference, including choice of companionship wherever possible has proven to be effective in reducing maternal mortality rate. This respect, full care on the other hand, in child, childbirth is an interaction or facility conditions that local consensus deems to be humiliating or undignified, and those interactions are conditions that are experienced as are intended to be humiliating or undignified. These definitions prove a platform for various groups to unite and challenge unacceptable social norms and poor health system and practice. A growing body of anecdotal and research evidence are now pointing to a disturbing picture of health workers such as midwives, disrespect and abuse, and women and girls worldwide in maternity service. Disrespectful care knows no geographical boundaries and such is not confined to any particular class or institution. A study that was done in Tanzania um, shows that 19 to 28 percent, there is a prevalence, um, shows that it's a health crisis, you know, and this study was prompted by the number of facility of um, women attending facilities to give birth. They realized that there was a decline. So the study was done and it shows that um, women describe their abuse as non-confrontational. -confront they resign oneself to abuse. So because they are being abused, they stay away from home, stay away, away and stay at home or they simply accept the abuse, or they return home or bypass certain facilities or providers. Male respondents describe more assertive approach, like the fathers, on the other hand, would request better care, or they pay a bribe, or lodge a complaint, and in one case, assaulted a provider. Also in Mexico, disrespect um, full care was rec um, documented. In Kenya, 20% of the women also reported disrespectful um, care. They found that the study, the study that was found, done found that non-confidential care was, was very um, pronounced, was very significant. Non-dignified care 
Some women report neglect or abundance or non-consensual care or even physical abuse and some have to pay. Um, they were de detained because they did not pay their fees. A qualitative study was also done in South Africa where it found that negative interpersonal relationship with caregivers was, was one of the theme along with lack of information, neglect and abundance abundantment and absence of labor companion. The patient provider relationship and antenatal care uptake at two referral hospitals in Malawi also documented disrespectful care. But what are the types of disrespectful, disres, disrespectful care? Rose and Hill reported that physical abuse, for example, hitting, rough, um, forcing legs apart, fundal pressure for normal delivery, non-consented care, non-confidential care, non-dignified care, discrimination based on specific patient attributes, abandonment of care, detention in facilities. In another study done by Manava, absenteeism or unavailability of providers, corruption, poor communication, unwillingness to accommodate traditional practices, authoritarian or frightening attitude was also documented. The question is asked, are midwives part of the problem? Skilled birth attendants such as midwives, behavior and attitude are a critical component as it relates to best practice in maternity service. Healthcare providers are more likely to value and adopt professional caring behavior and to obtain skills and knowledge to practice respectful maternity care. Midwives usually work diligent, treat women with compassion, and even use their own resources to assist women in referrals in case of life threatening emergency. The model that we use, the midwives model of care, has deep respect for normalcy for birth and the uniqueness of each childbearing woman and her family. The model is characterized by caring, empathy, support, trust, confidence, and all those positive words. As a matter of fact, the International Confederation of Midwives and the International Council for Nurses also mandated their constituents to protect the rights of their clients. The midwifery curriculum in many countries needs, however, strengthening in the areas of human rights and respectful care. There are many documented stories or narratives that have implicated midwives, and we can make reference to the White Ribbon Alliance. Also, in Jamaica, we have had our own. Um, a lot of some women reported disrespect and abuse. So we can safely say that midwives are a part of the problem. There are other, there are other uh, potential contribution to disrespectful care, however. For example, at individual level, you know, some women become normalized. They accept the abuse. They don't talk about it. Lack of community engagement and oversight, financial barriers, lack of autonomy and empowerment on the part of the women. In terms of laws and policy, lack of human rights in some countries, ethics, principles at the national level, lack of environment or national laws and policy, lack of legal redress mechanism and lack of re regulatory bodies. In terms of governance and leadership, lack of that. We are also lacking in that area. The service de delivery, in many of our practice areas, there are lack of standards and leadership, supervision for respect and non-abuse in childhood, lack of accountability. The provider, sometimes they have prejudice, provide this, providers distance as a result of training, provider demoralized, um, shortage of human resources and poor professional development opportunity and provide a status and disrespect. What do we need to do? The literature in the United States, when we look at the needs assessment, speaks to women of color. Um, that was what I found documented. It's usually women of color or um, Im immigrant women um, who would report disrespect and abuse, which is often due to poverty and lack of health insurance. Their maternal rate at that time was 28 per 100,000, which is trending down, I think it's down to 14. The law states that all governments are legally 
obligated to protect, respect, respect and fulfill the care of women. Um, we found that lack of information about sexual, sexual health, discrimination in the healthcare system, lack of access to sexual and reproductive health care, and poor quality of sexual and reproductive health information and services. Um, you heard Carlene just spoke about um, adolescents are also affected. A study done by Mary Stanton shows that refugees, women are also affected. It's usually women in low and middle, middle income countries, women ages 20 to 29 years old, women with more than one children. Women who are unemployed or have limited education also are disrespectful, disrespected. The characteristics of the abuser, lack of information about sexuality and sexual health, discrimination in the healthcare system, lack of access to sexual and reproductive health care, poor quality of sexual and reproductive health information and service, and of course, overworked staff, poorly paid and erratic schedule create a stressful environment that can underline respectful care. Of course, respectful care would have impact. One woman's negative experience may be enough to dissuade her family, neighbors, or friends from giving birth in a facility or delay seeking care. It can also impact the maternal and mortality rate. Many patients feel belittled or ignored, while the healthcare workers fail to feel demoralized. Disrespectful care is a recipe for dangerous delivery practice normalization of abuse by healthcare providers and health facilities. And of course, it can lead to barrier to countries achieving international goals. We have no data on the cost, but I can just imagine when a woman complains, and sometimes these cases would end up in the courts and they have to be compensated, it can be very costly. A study was done in the Caribbean, in Dominica, um, and Dominica, there, they have a 98% of deliveries that are done by skill workers. It shows that there was overcrowding and there was understaffed, inexperienced staff, uncomplicated labor and deliveries were over medicalized, emergencies were not dealt with in a timely fashion, and providers suffer from compassion fatigue, demoralized, and overwork. Quality of, quality of care was lacking, and the delivery and birthing process was dehumanized. So we see, we have it, we have that documented, but we don't have a study done in Jamaica. So we want to look at the Jamaican experience. Our maternal mortality rate at the moment is 89 per 100,000 live births. Nationwide, 96% of our births are hospital-based, and 90% of our births are conducted by skilled attendants, including midwives. Jamaica, like many other countries of recent time, in recent times have several reports of abuse by healthcare workers, including midwives. Midwives, mothers vow never to return to a particular hospital after claims of inhumane treatment. Three women have declared that they would never give birth at that hospital again after they said they were abused and mistreated by doctors and nurses. One reported that she became suicidal and had to seek professional counseling. She was told by the doctor she was the reason for her child's death as she was too fat and too lazy to push out the baby. I was slapped, laughed at. I was in and out of consciousness and that doctor looked at me and said, how oh, can I sleep so I must have, have sleep up now. So some of these, some of just, these are just anecdotal notes that our women are experiencing. A 16 year old claimed that she bore bored twin recently at the hospital and alleged that one was stolen after birth. There, I must tell you that there is usually an investigation and the chip usually falls where they may, but most times the public are not informed, leaving mistrust for the system. The theory that I've not yet coined any theory, but the area that I want to look at is central to having any discussion on disrespect and on abuse, there should be a theorizing on how midwives are predominantly women treat other women, especially vulnerable women such as those during the birthing process. 
Midwives are engaged in struggle to assert their professional and middle class identity and in the process deploy violence against patients as a result of creating social distance and maintaining fantasies, fantasy of identity and power. So we can look at um, patriarchy as one of the theories that we could use to theorize and to develop a theoretical framework on the proposal that I'm working on. So my, the aim of the, my study will be called an exploration of respectful maternity care in midwifery practice. And I believe it's a conduit for achieving the maternal health for the 2030 agenda in Jamaica. In this study, we, I hope to examine the level at which respectful midwifery is being practiced in maternity care in Jamaica. So I'll explore the mother's perception of care received during childbirth because what a woman perceives as disrespectful probably is not so. We have to do an investigation. We also want to examine the midwife's perception of the care for women during um, labor. We'll be using a cross-sectional study design using mixed method approach. Um, we are going through the ethical um, approval process at the moment and we hope to start in sep September and November. So for the mothers, the quantitative aspect of the study, we'll do a telephone survey using a questionnaire which was developed by the, the um, international literature. And for the midwives, we do a qualitative study where we do in-depth interview using a semi-structured interview guide. The women that will be included are mothers who were delivered by midwives during the month of September and November. Mothers who gave informed consent, mothers who are 18 and over. Midwives who have worked in the area and midwives who gave informed consent. We'll exclude mothers who are below 18 and mothers who have had cesarean section. We'll also exclude midwives who are on a part-time basis and midwives, of course, who are on leave during those two months. So we'll be doing our study at two public um, facilities that offers maternity care in the Kingston metropolitan area. They serve up um, a 0.5 million person living in that area. These two institutions are both teaching hospitals and therefore they are more likely to be open to accommodating research and using the findings. Both institutions have a midwifery program and midwives are rotated through the labor ward um, every six months. The, because we have to try the tools that we are will be using, it's new so we'll be um, pre-testing the tool at another hospital which has similar um, patients and that serves similar populations. Sorry. I believe that this study is relevant to Jamaica because it will strengthen the practice of respectful maternity care in Jamaica. It will also educate mothers of their rights to be to respectful care, inform the midwifery curriculum, develop standard guides to, to, to measure the prevalence of disrespect and abuse in maternity care and also inform future interventions on respectful maternity care. This study will also support the systematic review being currently conducted by WHO in which they hope to identify all forms of disrespect and abuse experienced by women during childbirth in facilities um, worldwide. The way forward. What do we need to do? We need to create, to, to, um, we need greater support from government and develop, men, develop development partners for research and action on disrespectful, disrespect and abuse. Initiate support and sustain program designed to improve the quality of maternal health care with a strong focus on respectful care as an essential component of quality care. We also need to emphasize the rights of women to dignified, respectful health care throughout pregnancy and childbirth. Involve all stakeholders, including women, 
in effort to improve quality of care and eliminate disrespectful and abusive practice. Generate, generate data related to respectful and disrespectful care practices. And this will ensure some system of accountability and meaningful professional support are also required. The fundamental right for respect for high quality health care should extend beyond the perinatal period to accommodate women throughout their lifespan. Development of a tool to measure women's perception of respect for maternity care in public health facility. We need professional development opportunities and quality of improve, um, improvement program, for example, in free and in service programs for midwives who are already in the system. And of course, we need to address staff shortage. Very importantly, we need to celebrate those midwives who have given selfish work. So we need to recognize them, even while the problem of abuse are uncovered. And this picture shows last year when um, midwives from the 14 parishes of, our, of, our, of Jamaica were celebrated. In summary, respectful, while respectful maternity care primarily emphasizes the absence of disrespect and abuse by healthcare providers and other staff, it also advocates positive and supportive staff attitude and behavior that increase a woman's satisfaction with her birth experience. The theme International Day of the Midwife, Women and Newborn, the Heart of Midwifery. This is where it's all stuff with us that midwives around the world continue to work hard every day to ensure women and newborns receive the quality care that they deserve. The end, and I want to thank you for listening. And Jamaica, no problem. These are some of my um, references. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you so much, Cynthia. You have a couple of questions. The first one is, why did you exclude birthing mothers who were under 18 years old from your study? Um, I did that specifically because in Jamaica, we are very protective of our um, teenage mothers. And um, they have to get a different types of consent. So at the moment, we just want to focus on the adults. And then in the future, we hope to do that, um, get that data so we can make a comparative data. And then Nicola is asking, does anyone know when the WHO systematic review will be published? The WHO? Yeah. Um, WHO has done a lot of work, and you can Google it, and you will get information. Um, they mostly focus in areas like South Africa, um, Uganda, Tanzania, Mexico. So there's the data out there um, from WHO already. Other questions for Cynthia? Remember that you can speak on the microphone. If you raise your hand, uh, I can open up your mic and you can speak instead of typing. We'd love to hear from you. Uh -huh. Cynthia, have you collected any of the data yet? No, no, we have not. We have not. We just have anecdotal notes. Right? Ah, well, that's actually what so I'm after. Start, I think. Uh, yes. um, I'm, I'm after some of the expressions from the mothers about the disrespect or the abuse that they um, were subject to. Anecdotal records, yes. And I've highlighted some. So those, the ones that I've highlighted are the ones that was made public. 
in in the written in the print media. Ah, uh huh. Oh, Nicola is asking you to expand on what you have based your questionnaire on. Um, the change project, I don't remember the acronym of the acronym. So there, there are two projects that are um, supported by UN, UN, UNFPA and um, USAID the change project and the traction project. They have done studies and what we have done was to modify their the question, the questionnaire. For example, the studies that they have done, they, they have three tools. One that will observe the midwife while he or she is giving care. One that they will ask the, the patient about their perception of care and one that will ask the midwives his or her perception of care. So the questionnaire focused on the nine types of abuse, like physical abuse or family um, giving support or physical need. And then I've, I've turned it around, I've modified. They gave me permission to modify it to ask, ask the questions of the, the mothers. So it's based on the change project and the traction project that was done in other parts of the world. They have given me permission to use. And those, like I said, they are focusing on the types of abuse according to WHO and ICPD rights mm. of the woman in, in childbirth or child care. <coughs> So Nicola is asking, um, are you looking at issues of poor practice, over medicalization, or only straightforward disrespect and abuse issues? And I, I think you've given us an idea about that. Um, yes, yes, because we are focusing on midwives. Um, we could do we could do study to extend to healthcare providers. But at the moment, we believe that midwives are predominantly women, and we believe that women ought to take care of women. But we know that that is not so. So that's why we are focusing on midwives at this moment. And we, as midwives, we want to let our voices heard in Jamaica. So we are, go, we are embarking on a series of studies looking at other areas to get our to get some attention or some traction in Jamaica in terms of creating our own knowledge. Cynthia, even before you collect your data, do you have an idea, once you've identified some systematic problems that might be creating disrespect and abuse, how, what you might use as some corrective actions? Yes, um, we start looking at the curriculum first. Um, um, as older midwives, we need to be a model for the, the, the younger midwives. Um, at, we have annual symposium, like a conference in Jamaica each year, and respectful care is one of the topics that is presented each year. So we are, we are working on it. And whenever issues um, should come come up, we usually attend to those issues immediately. And we see, are of course, strengthening our supervisory and our leadership role in the practice area. Okay, so do we have any more questions for Cynthia? 
Um, how, did you answer? I'm sorry, I've just come back. Did you answer the question about whether or not what you ex, what you based your questionnaire on? Yes. I right, sorry, said that the questionnaire was based on other that was done, and the change project and the traction project um, gave us permission to use their tool. So we have modified those tools for our cultural preference. And it, it's based on the types of abuse that um, as identified by the um, ICPD and the White Ribbon Alliance. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so I think we've run out of questions. So I, ha I think we have to th say thank you very much to Cynthia for um, coming today all the way from sunny Jamaica. Um, I actually live in Scotland where we have sunshine today. And I was sitting in the sun for a little while, <laughs> just to make the use of it. We don't get sun all that often. <laughs> um, so that, that's a, a lovely presentation. Thank you very much. Um, I'll just run through these final slides, as everybody knows we do each session. Um, OK. So just a reminder for me to turn off the uh, record recording.